guys, Teister here, and we're mm. back with another episode of Sad Boy Hours. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Um, Owen's 21. Yeah. And He's suffering. The effects of it. <laughs> He's feeling the effects of 21. Uh... <laughs> Oh. I'm feeling the effects of allergies and low sleep and Bro, no same. tolerance for low sleep. Ma mainly allergies, though. So we're all, like, dying. So it's probably going to be a oh, Jordan, that feeling of not being here. <laughs> Jordan's dying from the fact that he exists in America. America! Aren't we all? Be in America. Yeah. Except Owen. Owen isn't in but America right in now. America. Owen isn't anyway, in America. He's in Macarena. Hey, Macarena. Bye. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <clears throat> yeah, last anyway. we left off. Every time I say that phrase, I really want to follow it with the PB and Ks, but I know that's not who you are anymore. N none of them is not going to understand that, too. Nobody's going to understand. Can I just say, I was 100% waiting for you to throw the recap to me, and I was like, uh... No, oh, I by the way, do that to No, I wouldn't do that to you. You know I would do that to you? Hey, Jordan! Right, your turn. No, it's Owen's turn. I did it last time, I think. It is actually my it's, turn. I, up I, I, Jordan. I haven't done it yet. Jordan, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Last we left right. off. <laughs> last we left off, we dissected a dragon. I mean, we, re we really didn't do much last session. We actually didn't yeah. do much. Last session, but you received a kind of passive-aggressive, I don't want to be helping you, but the boss says I have to message from another adventuring party who deigned to identify themselves. Do we know their names? Nope. You never got names as far as I'm aware. Ooh. Wait, wait, wait. Most important thing. We changed your names to the Tidebringers. Yep. Uh, totally. The passion product is now the Tidebringers. Um, Take that, Hanko, you finished dissecting orders. the dragon, and with the aid of the spell Tensor's Floating Disc, you managed to put together some 10x10 10 10 pieces of scale-covered skin, uh, as well as the entire skeleton and the heart of this adult copper dragon. <laughs> and you set out on your journey. After some time and some various shenanigans, Thaliard decided to investigate the heart a little bit. Uh, <laughs> at night when he was supposed to be on watch side. during the first watch, uh, Thaliard went over to the heart of the dragon and climbed inside and found a very hostile environment that once he had taken a small bite of the heart flesh mm, like became chicken. a much more comfortable environment and he promptly fell asleep within the confines of the adult dragon's heart. That's where we ended I, last week's session. I, I want a t-shirt that just says, I, you shouldn't leave your wizard alone with the dragon. <sighs> Do I need to roll any saves? Poyo, Leonidas, and Gilda. That's me this session, because Eden's not here. You all it come really to... Sad boy hour. You all come to consciousness in the morning. Wasn't someone supposed to be keeping watch? No one ever woke you up for watch. Where's Thaliard? I refer to. I look at the. I immediately look at the. 
the dragon. I look at Leo and Gilda, and then look back at the dragon, and I continue this until one of you say something. I'm just frantically looking back and forth. supposed to woken up for what? Yup. I w- God damn- Where's that damn Thalyard? He was supposed to wake well, us up. Well, what do you think? Where do you think, Leo? I don't know, maybe he ran off or something. Can I do an investigation check to see if I could find any tracks to see where he was? Can I help? Um, sure, roll survival checks. Survival? I want it to be survival. in. Oh, wait, no, that's worse. Oh, this is... Yeah, I'll take oh, survival is... advantage. Yeah. Bonk. Oh, shit! Shit, dude. Oh, first, look. first roll of the day. Not 20. 25. 25. You know what's funnier than 25? 26. 69. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Um, yeah, you see a set of footprints leading to where the, what pieces of the dragon you had brought with you are lying there, and the heart of the dragon seems slightly canted to one side. No, no he didn't. He got very hungry, huh? I doubt he would be this hungry. Maybe hungry for knowledge, I guess. Hey, man. I don't judge messing with a man's lunch. I certainly lunch. judge. Oh, I'm judging. I meant like messing with a limit man's lunch. But this. This is kind of taken it at a different level. Well, I'll try if to see if there's an opening in the heart. Uh, he yeah, you find yeah. the, uh, one the of the, open. like, there, there's various blood vessels that go into and out of the heart, um, just because that's kind of how hearts work. They're big enough for you to crawl through if you'd like. I'm just gonna open up a little bit and just yell in there. Thalia, are you okay in there? Are you in there? What's your passive perception? Uh, 17. 17? You hear a slight snore. Ah. Uh. Do you want to do, uh, boulder parchment shears to see who goes in there and get them? I just go in. But first, uh. I. Bonus action! Shift. Right. Shift? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, shit. Fuck. Yeah, you're, um... <sighs> yeah, excuse me. Bless you. Your spikes kind of elongate and you kind of use the extra traction to help pull you into the heart where you can see Thaliard kind of curled up on one side of one of the heart's chambers. The air is clear. Clean. Is it like, like, what's the temperature? Is it like, like, uh, it's very similar to what it is outside. It's only slightly warmer. Yeah. Um, but not like, uh, 
It's not like an oven or anything, no. Yeah. It's not a sweat box. Which is surprising inside a dead fucking dragon. That! You lazy... Kind of scrape. I I I, re I instantly realized that I'm barefoot. Okay. So I just kind of I just kind of take one of the sandal the, the sandal I had in my pocket and just put that on and I just kind of hop. I just kind of hop with one leg. Well, presumably you would have put them on in before you uh went into the heart. Oh. I mean, would I put on the one sandal I have on? Maybe. I mean, I have. Hmm. Whatever. That's fair, I guess. Yeah, you make your way yeah. in. Yeah. You're in the... It's a bit of a tight squeeze to put both you and Thaliard in that chamber. Um, Especially with Thaliard's relative size compared to yours. Yeah. Has he grown an inch or two? Has he been eating his veggies? Roll a medicine check. Ah, oh, fuck. I mean, it just seems like a very, uh, very asleep Thaliard. I fucking kick him. Roll the attack. Just a shrink check, or...? Yeah. Eh. Yep. That'd be what damage? Uh, no damage. <laughs> Sally, are you kind of wake with a start? And for a moment, you're not sure where you are. And you kind of reach up to push some of the hair out of your eyes. And wait, that's the hand that you're missing. Do um, I have a hand, though? Not a hand. A four-fingered... Almost amber-like claw. What? Almost Ew. like... It's faintly translucent. Um... It, it honestly, it looks like it's made out of stained glass, and as you kind of flex the digits of it, you expect to hear some form of cracking sound. You kind of hold it up, and you can kind of see through it a little bit. Would I recognize the material? Uh... It seems to be a more robust variant of the type of material that you would see, uh, that you would have seen uh, higher level wizards at your school use when they cast spells like uh, Bigby's Hand. Huh. It's almost like a like a personified force that seems to be grafted into your hand. Uh, uh, hmm. you... I'm assuming my Cyril is just over top of it now. Your Cyril is gone. Gone? Seems to have been 
destroyed or consumed in whatever process caused this new claw to grow. Well, time to delete that from my uh, inventory. <laughs> Again. Po Poyo just looks just a mix of disgusted and very confused and just disappointment. I, I, I kind of look around and just kind of pull myself out. Did I finish I, I a just... long rest? Uh, yes, you have completed a long okay. rest. I, I kind of help him out, like help him up and what, and whatnot. Okay. Oh, nice. <clears throat> nice. nice. Four tens. Twenty and a nineteen. <clears throat> Holy fucking That's shit! That's second day in a row with a natural twenty on portents. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> God, do I fucking need it? <laughs> no, as and you're what... climbing out of the heart, you kind of get the feeling this is going to be a really good day. And what did I tell you about climbing into Dragon Hearts? Now you listen here. No, and you I listen. Point, no, I point at him here. with the. I point at him with the new hand. Okay. Ew! I, 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 I kind of lock it off of my hand. <laughs> I was trying something new, and it worked, and it answered questions that I have had for a significant time. Might have answered your questions, but I'm having quite a lot more. To be honest. About like, me, where the fuck did that come from? This I, I. The best I can presume was that it came from a innate sense of magic within the dragon's heart. As he says what? this, you notice the heart slump is becoming much more extreme, and it almost seems to be decaying at an advanced rate. And Do you need a napkin or something? Did you take the power from the heart? Is that what you did? I simply went inside to look at it. Just curiosity. And, and then you got hanged over inside a dragon. No, um, its acid core started to burn. So I made a logical assumption, and I took a bite of the flesh. After, after acid. And, and then you decided to hurt, sleep in the acid. Although it hurt. After eating a fragment of whatever power that the uh, heart conta uh, came, contained within its flesh, I then somehow managed to feel okay. The acidic nature did not burn. It was almost as if I was forming a connection with the dragon itself. So yes, I, I, I believe that I did take the power of the heart unintentionally, but... Unintentionally? You fucking ate the heart! I ate a small fragment of it as a hypothesis of resolve. That doesn't seem safe, though. It's I'm not. no alchemist, but... It's not, but on the other hand, I pushed forward because knowledge is greater than my own self. Knowing how to solve something or making steps towards process and progress towards more is beyond my mortal flesh. I am merely a puppet for knowledge's design. Hey, do you need a napkin? I'm good. 
Yeah, you have some blood marks all over your face. I don't know where that came from. Maybe the heart? Yeah. Gee. I'm good. I will resolve myself. I'm assuming I went back to normal hit points. Yes, you have completed a long rest. Oh, thank God. Additionally... Oh... You I don't have resistance too? to acid damage. Oh! Yes. Oh, You yeah. have gained the true caster feat that you can see in homebrew feats. What um, is going on? <laughs> the ability score that you increase uh, with that is your charisma. For the I'm record. okay with that. That's, that. That bumps me up to an actual higher charisma score. School, Happy birthday, so Orin. Happy Additionally, birthday, <laughs> you may now cast the uh, spell Tasha's Caustic Brew at first level at will. What is going on? <laughs> and once per turn, when you hit a creep, or excuse me, once per long rest, Creeper. when you hit a creature with a unarmed strike using your new draconic claw, you may cast the spell slow, targeting only that creature. The creature has disadvantage on its saving throw. <laughs> what is going on? You've also grown three inches. <laughs> Where? What? You weigh 30 more pounds. Okay. <laughs> and of course, your Searle is gone, as we'd said earlier. Alright, now it's not worth it. No, it's very worth it. That's a lot. I've got a first level spell at will. Yep. Jesus. First time. First time me as a warlock. <laughs> right, so I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. If I I'm, find I, a if I find a dragon heart and I eat it, will I gain these powers too? I think you just I, die. I think that's part of the power of the um part of the power of the spell the the heart is the person who involves themselves with it it's given me the thing I lost which was going to be a huge disadvantage um for everything I would not be able to cast spells or um do anything uh, with two hands ever again. Um, and, uh, prosthetics. There are, but uh, it would need to be magical means. On the other hand, this has given me another hand. What a handful. Beyond, uh, interesting. I can't lie and say that it didn't come without pain. But I also believe that for the moment, it was a good discovery to learn more about the drawbacks of everything. Eating a dragon heart? I mean, if you got the chance to, uh, if you got the chance to do it, would you? Absolutely not, that sounds disgusting. Yes, but I sometimes mean... disgusting things lead to great consequences. Exactly my point. Maybe with pepper? Add some salt to it, maybe some spices? 
Oh, I thought you were talking about the person Pepper. I'm no, sorry. of course not. Did I? I believe that with the knowledge gained here, that it is possible to presume that, well, not just presume, it is known that older dragons, uh, adult or ancient, seem to have magical abilities laden into their core, which fundamentally could change the way that we perceive magic. But what about in the wrong this... hands? Wouldn't they have this when they were born, and not just adult and el uh, elder dragons? Yes, but consider what has happened as a result. Wormlings and young dragons may have some fragment of this power, but it's not that the, I am ever off. suggesting anyone else do this. I have done this at great, severe risk to myself. But I believe that maybe also the heart of the dragon chooses. I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you two. I am still very much confused. As am I for the moment. But I am working on it. My my head is kind of fuzzy after the events of last night. You got some hung hungover, huh? Oh, yes. Um... Anyway, we have a job to do in taking these pieces with us. Alan, um, is the heart trade, still... Is the heart still... At this egg? point, the heart has nearly completed its decay. It's beginning to liquefy. <sighs> okay. So there's no need to carry the heart. Can I tell if the heart is, um, at the moment, like, as a, as acidic as it used to be? Does it still hold its, uh, acidic um, nature? Roll a straight d20. Can I help uh, him? No, it's only straight. You can make it a gay d20. Can you do that for me? I mean, the alley up's down. Boom. Come on, man. <laughs> Burn that one of the day. Come on, man. Yeah, you uh, have no idea whether it's still acidic or not. I'm going to touch it. Okay. I just want to do Actually, it for fun. Actually, no. Before, oh. he, before he touches it, I would like to go and touch it. Before they touch it, I'm going to touch it. I'm I'm right next to it, man. You can't touch it if I'm touching it. I touch it. you all and push you of, off. <laughs> all three of you touch the heart at the same time. I poke it. No, I don't touch we, the heart. I touch the liquid. We roll initiative of the heart. to see who actually touches it at the same time. Please uh, no. Yeah, never mind. You each I'm take two points of uh, acid damage. For you, Thaliard, that's reduced to one. I'm guessing my shift has ended, yeah? No. No? Not quite yet. Huh. So, it seems... Was that on decomposition? Thaliard starts taking notes. Almost, like, mental notes almost immediately. Okay. Mm -hmm. Full later. Yeah. Because he doesn't have the time to write them down. Hey, Alan. Off topic, yeah? Okay. Does, uh, does Thaliard have, like, a certain odor now? Does he smell? D does he smell? Does he smell very bad? Aurora Borealis? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, have I become a dirty wizard? No. I intentionally oh, avoided that. 
Um, <laughs> oh god. Well, he certainly smells the way someone who spent Just the night in came like... out of a corpse. Yeah, he smells like a mortician who needs a bath. Natalia doesn't really care. We do. Uh, Take a shower, should... dip. Take a dip, dip dong. Dip what dong. is the shower that you speak of? Not shower. It's um, the thing that the, the water wash showers. Oh, a bucket and your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Quick and easy. Got the five dollars though. Five, five gold. Shut, shut up. Ah. All right. Well, anyway. I assume we should uh, continue on our journey. Without the heart, Alan. I was, I, I was using three before, but I think it was just the heart on one. The heart only weighed about seventy to eighty pounds. Only yeah. seventy. So... Oh yeah, Triangle. Alan. I looked at that, that I your uh, approximate weight would still be about the same. I think you would still need three. Okay. But right now we only need two. Alan, I, I looked. Use the, I looked the finger uh, that I poked the heart with. Okay. It's <laughs> salty. <laughs> Needs more pepper. <laughs> Before we go, Alan. Okay. I'm gonna cast Gift of Alacrity on myself. Okay. Just in case. Roll for encounters. Someone. Me is my turn. Okay. Birthday yeah. Boy. Nineteen. That means it's bad. Pretty sure oh my that God, is just... something, actually. We're gonna oh find God. another dead dragon. Oh God! <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> get get a sword, open it up, go for the heart. <laughs> should have gone for the head. You should have gone. You stumble for the upon head. the corpse of a rat. <laughs> That's the most interesting no, thing rat. that happens all no. day. You have a very boring day of travel. I kicked the rat corpse into the into at the least. Thingo. At least the weather's nice. Very sunny. Just all, barely any cloud cover. And I've got no spells left by the end of the day. Yes. Because for I think what three, three. So for two hours, I just cast the cast the spells. And then the rest of the time, it's ritual cast. Yep. Setting watches that night. Thaliad will go first. I'll take second watch. No, I'll take third watch. Well, I guess I'll take second. Monkey in the middle. Okay. Oh, go ahead and roll your monkey. perception checks. Monkey. Nope. Taking your nat twenty. Oh yeah. Okay. You saw a bat, and that's it. You saw the dead um, rat walking towards you. As you settle down <laughs> into your camping routine, Thaliard, you find a place to keep a lookout over the camp. Mm -hmm. And... With this new hand comes a renewed... Vigor, renewed determination, a new hope, and sorry, what? He said a new hope. Not bad, bad boy. Bad boy. No bad. How many points of psychic damage do I take? All that, of it. No. No? Uh, yeah. 
Uh, you keep the sharp eye out. And really is a shame because nothing happens. Okay. <laughs> Near the end of my watch, I'm assuming we have trees nearby. Um, only a few. A pit? You're deep in the mountains at this point. Okay. And oh, we're in the mountains. Most you, okay. <laughs> most of what you've been traveling through has been fairly rocky or snowy or icy or both. Is there a boulder nearby? Or like a yes. Wall? Are you going to pee on the yeah, boulder? Yeah, he's standing right there. Yeah, you, <laughs> we'll say you've been sitting on a small outcropping of rock to uh, keep watch over the camp. Is there a decent sized one like that like looks like it would be relatively tough? What are you looking for? I want to test the strength of this new claw. Okay. <laughs> Uh, sure. We'll say you find yourself a, uh, decently sized boulder to mm -hmm. use as a training dummy. And I just pull back and then just punch straight forwards with the claw. As the claw meets the surface of the stone, there's a slight resistance before the claw kind of almost absorbs into the stone. Uh, it takes a very quick reaction from you to avoid punching your stump into the stone, which would have been very painful. Mm -hmm. But as you pull it back out, the claw sort of reforms. All right, so this doesn't do physical damage. Good to know. I've my stuff is relatively nearby, is it? Isn't it? Yes. I pick up one of the smaller dragon claws because I had two of them. Right. And I hold it in the hand just to kind of get a feel for holding things. Does you hold it, it in up? your new hand. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you hold it just fine. Okay. And then just would like to just like. Just to get used to the flexibility, just make slashes as if I was holding a dagger made of this dragon claw. The joints are surprisingly flexible, probably because they're not entirely there. Um... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. One thing After you that. notice, though, okay. is that the while the claw that you had picked up has dulled a little bit while being in your uh, pack, the claws on this new hand of yours are razor sharp mm -hmm. and would likely make a more effective weapon than just the claws on their own or a dagger. Okay. okay. Um, I, uh, at one point, just put the claw down and then try again with just the hand slashing at the uh, boulder. Just again, to get a feel for how it would work. Again, every time you meet the surface of that boulder, there's that slight resistance before the claw kind of plunges through. And... Okay. After a moment, emerges the other side. Uh, after a few tries, you manage to find a way to focus yourself. That the claw starts leaving deep gouges in the granite stone. Um. After I'm getting to this point, I want to try and break boulder with a slash see if it can if, if it can reach deep enough to do that like a karate chop or no as in like using the claws like slice oh like a wolverine thing yes 
Um. I will roll for it as well. Yeah, go ahead and roll a attack with your strength okay. modifier. I'm using my portent. 19. Okay. Plus 2, so 21. Plus, I'd have proficiency. Yeah. So, yeah, 23. Um. Yeah, you reach out and you find that same moment of resistance before the claw plunges in. And you manage to find the heart of the boulder, the kind of dead center of where its weight is. And you grab it and squeeze and the boulder just crumbles. Wisps of green and gold magic kind of whisper their way out of the dust. It seems that I have a powerful weapon in my hand. Almost like my soul is fused. Very interesting. And very good to know. I kind of just lean on the nearest rock that's the nearest rock to me. Okay. I just... Um, in my other hand, my real hand, I once again make the, uh, small trinket and just look at it one more time, just breathing in everything that it represents and means. And I just, uh, think about, um, uh, Vasil. Okay. And then once it will that um, end your long will that end your uh once it once that, watch. Once that does I go over to uh his next Poyo. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I just go Poyo, it's time to wake up. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Give me a minute. Uh, Poyo. You need yeah, to wake I'm, up. I'm going, I'm going. Uh I just give him a small slap. Okay. I dodge. <laughs> Can okay. I counter attack? You may counter attack, but only with your pillow. I do the, exactly that. Okay. Uh, Thaliard, you reach out to try to smack him, and he rolls over to the side, and you miss, and then suddenly there's an explosion of soft bludgeoning damage against the side of your skull. As Thaliar just womps you with a pillow. <laughs> As Poyo just womps you with a pillow. Dies of 1d4 pillow damage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, but yeah, I, I get up and uh, I kind of scratch my eyes a bit. And I begin the de watch. Okay. Roll a perception check. Perceptive. Ooh. Oh, Nineteen. Ooh. Nice. That's very surprising. <laughs> I scratched directly on my eyeball. Yes. Yeah. Uh, with a nineteen, nothing seems to jump out at you throughout the middle of the night. Uh, the ring light tonight is pretty dim, so kind of hard to see, but you don't mind it. Your watch ends uneventfully. This is boring. So I, uh, yeah, I go over to Leo. Actually... On. Don't don't mind me. I'm gonna roll a D two. Just just don't don't mind me, okay? I'm minding you. Fuck. <sighs> yeah, 
Actually, you know what? Since you said that, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Al, this is what I do. All right? Wait, no, it's not. Wait, I didn't mean. Why not? No, listen. Because I said so. Why? Because I said so. Well, you don't even know what I'm gonna do. It's not harmful. I, I, I think. Will it be harmful it's to the my I mind? It's I think that I'm worried about. Okay, listen, listen. Okay. I kind of. Will it be uncomfortable? <laughs> no, look. No, okay, Alan, listen. I. I kind of, knee like kind of kneel down next to uh Leo, right? Okay. And I just uh. I just kind of dig at his at a, at his at the top of his head, right? And I'm looking no for fleas. Couple. No, I'm looking for fleas, right? Okay. I it, do I find a flea? How dare you think I have fleas on me? Leo, does Poyo find a flea? No, I Fuck. keep my fur nice and clean. Okay, fine. I look like I look, look like I I look for a for like a bug. That is like close to Leo. <laughs> you gonna fuck put a bug on me? Or no. Me? Sure, you find a beetle. A cat infestation. Oh yeah, I flick it at him. Ah, uh, that's a con save, right? Yeah, I believe. Yeah. Leonidas, you are rudely awakened by the need for a constitution saving throw. Oh boy, I yeah. think I need to make a constitution saving throw. Wait, he's actually- what? Jesus. What the fuck is wrong with you? I did it. Oh, okay. fuck. I- I just kinda flicked a fucking- what, a beetle, right? I just yeah. kinda flicked a beetle at you. And you're like, what the fuck? Yep. You wake up with a beetle on your forehead. And no other ill effects. Oh. God, they're all laughing for me. I just flick it off. I wanted to test them. Oh. oh. It's your shift. Oh, Poyo, is it my turn? Mm-hmm. You know, the, strange, the strangest thing happened. I don't usually get bugs on me, but one just, you know, sort of crawled upon upon me. You attract them, dude. Do I? Yes. <laughs> Roll the okay, that's a compliment then. All right. Yeah. I I'll just take kinda my watch go then. over and. Yeah, take a sleep. Uh. Yep. Leo, go ahead and roll perception. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice. Oh, lots of good dice today. <laughs> Since you said that, no, not anymore. Yeah, I was gonna get ones. Mhm. Mm yeah. It's your fault. You're welcome. Yeah, Leonidas. Uh, you keep a watch over the camp, and. Just as the sun is starting to rise, you uh, kind of glance over at Thaliard and his newfound claw. You start to wonder what it's made out of. Big, bitty claw. If you can, like, what if you could duplicate that? You want a scary claw you kinda head, just Leo? Started, you kind of just start thinking about what material could it be and whether you could make any more. You said it's uh, transparent, yeah? Yeah, it's translucent. Glass. You said it's like similar to stained glass? Yeah, it's it's it looks very much like a piece of orange stained glass. Almost to the extent that whenever it moves, you expect it to like start cracking the way glass does. But it's in the shape of an exquisite uh, four fingered draconic claw. I'm gonna go over to Thaliard and I'm going to 
lightly touch the the claw and see if he has any feeling in the claw and see if he reacts oh my to my touching it. Oh my god, just tickle him. Uh, you touch the claw. Valera doesn't react. Get out of my swamp. Hush, sleeping boy. That's a wild Hush. dream. <laughs> you sleep. Anything else, Leonidas? No, I'll just let him sleep again. I thought you were about to say, I'm going to slam him. I'm going to slam him. You go back to your, uh, <laughs> your bedroll to sleep? Yeah. Okay. Will that be all? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think Maybe. so. Alrighty. You all come to consciousness the next day? I am conscious now. Haha, <laughs> yeah. I am awake. Someone go ahead and roll for the day's travel. That's me. That's me. Oh, oh okay. that's me. <laughs> Ball. Uh, yeah, hell really yeah. Matter. Doesn't matter. That's what I'm talking doesn't... about. <laughs> Double threes. <laughs> no, that doesn't count. Lee and I just roll again. What? That's not fair. I didn't... I didn't fucking oh oh yeah, my yeah. god three plus that's three hilarious. Is six. <laughs> oh, no. It's all coming together. It's hilarious. What do be okay. comedy right here, y'all? Um, mm -hmm. peak comedy. The morning brings with it a heavy fog that the morning that the sun can't quite get through um <laughs> as you travel along you start to come down out of the mountains and it's good to feel grass and see more trees again and you see a cobblestone path kind of crossing where you've been hiking. Off to one side it seems to lead to the to a dead end. On the other side it kind of meanders lazily through the fog. Is there any way to tell if there's a road road more traveled in this sense? It appears that the... First of all, you haven't been on a road like this whole time. Uh, you started by following a riverbank and then you've just been setting out on your own. Yeah. So you've been hiking through the wilderness. This is the first road-like structure you've encountered. Uh, and it lies vaguely perpendicular to the direction you're traveling. A little bit less than perpendicular, but... Did we find it? Directional. Did we find the golden road that'll take us to where we need to go? The yellow brick road? Yeah, did we find the yellow brick road? I think we did. Alright. Are we all ready to find the Wizard of Oz? Let's go. <laughs> it's the Wizard of Oz, Dreevok. <laughs> Alright, who's gonna be the lion? Probably you. Damn straight. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, you follow this road? Road sure. Road okay. sure. <laughs> you follow it for maybe 30 steps before you see it uh, climb into a set of stone stairs to a wooden porch at the front of a small homely cottage. There's an animal pen to one side, although the only animals in it are a pair of mountain goats, who both look rather old and tired. So us. Exactly. 
Wait, who you calling old? Who you calling old? Anyway, uh... Are there any, like, lights on or anything in the house that we can see? Any windows? Um... There's a few windows. None of them have glass in them. They're just shuttered. Um... But a couple of the windows are open, and you can hear... What sounds like laundry being done from within. Someone's got that dryer going. So immediately, I just kind of, without any say, I just kind of knock on the door. Okay. After a few seconds, you hear a voice call out from inside. A elderly woman's voice. Uh, just a moment, dear. I patiently wait, just kind of twiddle my thumb. After a few minutes, you see the door open to almost what looks like a humanoid hyena. Oh, if a shifter? She seems to, she's definitely old. Her whiskers are grayed out. One of her ears is partially torn. Uh, her yellow eyes are kind of slowly look at each one of you. She's wearing a kiss the chef apron. Yeah. <laughs> um, and her almost burgundy uh, fur is kind of splotchy and inconsistent across her body. Like across her arms. Ah! We don't get a lot of travelers up here. Yes, hello. Hello. We've been uh, traveling for quite some time, and we saw a cobblestone road, and we were uh, wondering where it uh, led. And here oh, we are. Oh, that's just my little road. I head to oh, the other side of. Of course. I've Very been. Very nicely done. I've been building and gardening here for some years now. Is it just you out here and your uh, goats? Just me. Insight. Roll insight. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. Ah, oh, fuck. She seems to be telling the truth. She's you don't. You now, don't. She you don't goats. sense any ill will from this old woman. Hmm. Hey, excuse me. Uh, do your go tub names? If not, I have some suggestions. They're Phyllis and Hobbert. Kind of look at uh at Phyllis. I'm like, yeah, that does look like a Phyllis. That's my boy Phyllis right there. It kind of bleats at you. I bleat back. Roll performance. <laughs> Okay, so you know that old vine where the two guys scream and the other the guy holds up a goat and the goat screams? Yeah. <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> must be quite lonely up here. 
don't you think? Well, gnolls aren't really accepted in a lot of places. It's not that bad, though. I'm happy up here. I live decently. No noisy neighbors. Well, I think that's the noises of a mall, don't you think? And I point to the goats. Oh, See, they're no ball. trouble at all. They quiet down about when I head to bed. Where are my manners? Come in, come in. Oh, uh, 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 thank you. She leads you into the small cottage. It's a sort of a three room <sighs> deal. Uh, you enter into kind of a main living area. Uh, slash workshop area. Um, you can see various knitting tools, um, balls of yarn. There's a desk with what looks to be some extra parchments along with uh, an inkwell. Uh, it's attached to a simple kitchen. Uh with the kitchen fire burning and a pot of something resting above it. And there's a third room that is screened off by what appears to be a hung and tanned bearskin hide. Quite a place. <sighs> Oh, it's nothing fancy, just... It gets by. Definitely looks cozy here, at least. It certainly is. Uh, tea? Would you like tea? Oh, uh, of course, of course. I I should be good. I'm good. Are man. you sure? Not much of a tea person, you know. Well, all right then. That's part of the reason why I keep this path. There's a small grove of various herbs that just grow naturally near the end of it, and I wanted an easier way to get over there. The uh, pot hover, uh, kind of hung over top of the cooking fire, starts hissing, and she hobbles over slowly to go and take it off of the fire and pour cups with it. Uh, she pours five cups, one for each of you, despite the fact that a couple of you had declined the tea. I just kind of give it to Kendall. And hope they like it. Sets them out on a small coffee table in the living room. So, you said you're travelers, right? Adventurers, Where to? yeah. Well, yeah, more so adventurers than travelers, to be honest. We just kind of wander around so far. Well, we adventurers have, uh... always have need for healing, don't they? Oh, yeah. I dabble a bit in herbs and how to combine them. I do have a draught that I could sell you. A draught? A potion, if you will. Although I'm not a fan of the word. What kind of a potion is this? Oh, just a simple imbuement to cure what ails you. What, did you find the cure for the common cold? Oh, I wish. It's quite common up here, and it is quite cold as well. No, just a simple healing potion. How much are you selling? Oh. I mean, I don't. I 
Do you take money? I don't really think there's much use of money over in these parts. Well, I prefer to trade, but I can take money. Occasionally, an adventurer will come through with uh, something that I'd like to buy, and well, it's nice to have money then. Did you have anything you wanted to trade? Uh, I kind of look through my pockets and shit. Uh, what about this dagger? It's not fancy, and I kind of found it pretty recently, but it could be useful for, uh, uh, cutting, cutting things, cutting meat. Yeah. I just kind of spin the dagger in my hand. At least I try to. Roll a persuasion check. With an 18, she kind of nods a little bit. Yes, my meat cleaver did break a few seasons back. It'd be nice to have something else to cut with. You got a deal. Alright. She passes you almost what looks like a water skin, but upon unstoppering it, you can see the liquid inside is red and healthy looking it's fruit punch you know one of the adventures that came through here a little while ago sold me a magic thread i've been working on something with it would you like to see sure uh. i kind of give the the big wet sack the, the wet sack to Leo. Oh, gee, thank you. What in the fuck is going on again? I'm sorry, I left the room for a moment. What to say? Oh, your guests in my home, the uh, old knoll woman says. Old knoll woman? Or yes. Knoll. G N O L L. Okay. Interesting. Um, she kind of glances around and hobbles over to one of her shelves where she picks up a decently sized uh, kind of drawstring pouch. I figure you're always picking up more than you can carry. As I can tell by the entourage outside. So I figured I'd make a bag just in case anybody needed it. Hmm. A big. I'm assuming big is not the real opportunity. How huge? No. Would I have knowledge of this kind of magic? Um, roll an arcana check. Oh, hey, I didn't do my portents for the day. Um. Bad. What do you mean, bad? I said not, I said not, I said not bad. All not we heard was bad. bad. I, I know. Uh, in which bad. case, I'm going to take that 18. And plus 6. Okay. Uh, yeah. Despite how... Despite the fact that the way that she's describing it is a little bit strange, uh, you gather that she's probably talking about a bag of holding. Yeah. So I assume... In the way you're discussing, this is a 
bag which can hold more than it physically shows, correct? It's smaller on the outside, you could say. Or you could say it's bigger no, on the inside. No, you couldn't say that. I, I, I am not. I am not. <laughs> yeah. Would you be able to show us such an item? Well, yes, I have it right here. She kind of holds it up. Okay. It definitely appears homemade. Um. Uh, do you have anything stored in the bag at the moment? Oh, no. I made this out of some... Enchanted thread a group of people brought and traded me a little while back. I figured it might make someone's life easier Based on the entourage you have outside. I think that might be you However, I just ask For those who have not seen Something of this nature before would you be able to give us a demonstration? Certainly uh, porcupine, spiky one. I'm sorry, you haven't told me your names yet. Oh yeah, how how rude of us. My name is Poyo Famantine. Uh, Poyo, if I could borrow one of your quills for just a moment. Yeah, sure. I just gonna and give it <laughs> one quill. She kind of takes it and slowly lowers it down into the bag past the point where it should have poked out the bottom of the bag until it's fully contained within and then reach like slowly pulls it back out and hands it back to you and her hand goes completely through yeah okay okay Balliard's a bit more safe about it because I'm assuming if he knew of bags of holding, he also knew of, um... The other kind. Probably not, actually. Okay. He was just being cautious, then. As anyone would with an old gnoll. Gnoll is in hyena, yes? Uh, really? yeah. Okay. He was just being cautious. Fair enough. <laughs> she starts like fucking laughing hysterically and shit. Anyways, I got the string for twenty gold. I'd be willing to sell you this for just a hundred. Or if you have anything to trade, of course. Are you a crafter of all kinds or just a weaver? I do this and that. I. Whatever I need around the house, you know, I'm all alone up here, so I keep myself busy. Would you like the skin and some scales from my dragon? And would that be an acceptable trade? How, how much skin would you offer? Mm. We have a couple of ten foot by ten foot uh, pieces so it would be a case of what how many would you prefer well I have been needing new sheets for my bed the old ones are wearing a bit thin and it is getting colder every night now uh, I could probably do with two of those I I go outside and grab two of my own ones Okay. She'll pass you the bag of holding. Uh, you can now add the homemade bag of holding to your inventory. Oh god. Bag of holding. Homemade. <clears throat> okay. Is there any differences in use? No. Okay. Um, 
So it can back up there. Da, 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 da. Can hold up to five hundred pounds. Yeah. Hey, Alan. Yeah. You have? Do you have a list of everything that we have? What do you mean? That we're carrying on like the floating desk. I, know I would assume you would have that. That's your inventory. I've got the skeleton that we said was about seven, seven, no, eight hundred pounds. A little under a thousand. Okay. So I've got that, which I'm assuming is about nine fifty ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a bunch of the ten foot by ten foot scale things and the claws. Yes. Um. But yeah, you, uh, with this bag of holding, you can definitely. Uh, cut down the number of spells you have to cast in order to get moving by one. Okay. Then, yes. I, I, I turn to the woman and just say, Thank you. This will be more than useful. Anyways. You all look tired. Uh. Suppose I could let you sleep here in the living room tonight. If you don't mind. I mean, I'm not really tired, I feel like but... we would be too much of a bother, to be honest. Oh, not at all. It's nice to have the company. Well, um... If you are sure, then... That would be I insist. Hmm. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Can I insight? Sure, roll insight. This is gonna go badly. Can yeah. I insight, or as I'm looking directly at her face. Sure, roll insight. Oh, I rolled it to GM. Whoops. Fuck! I dropped my dice. Ah, uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? GM. Woo woo. <laughs> Where did my dice go? There it is. Oh. Uh, yeah. She seems forthright. Just honestly doesn't want you out in the cold. Hmm. Thank you. We will take the time and uh, we will make sure to tell you when we are leaving in the morning. Of course, you'll stay for breakfast. Of course. Breakfast? Well, not now, but in the morning. Yeah. What do you usually make? Well, what about oh. second breakfast? Usually just an assortment of vegetables. Uh, I've got carrots recently, so I'll probably do something with that. Calm <laughs> down there. Like again. Because that does not sound funny. Alright, sir. Uh, thank you for your hospitality. Of course. And what was your name again? Je. Je? G E R. Ah. And yours, Mr. Rabbit? Floyd. His name is Floyd. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Leonidas. Leonidas Floyd. And I'm Gilda. I never said my last name. <laughs> oh, he would just chuckle to <laughs> himself. Floyd is a girl's name. <laughs> anyway. She kind of nods at the group. 
Oh yeah, uh, Gilda. Yeah. And this is Gilda, Fisher. Yeah, I just introduced myself. Um, I apologize, Gilda. Gilda. Oh, not to worry. A little bit of repetition always helps you to remember someone's name. Anywho, it's getting a bit late, at least for me. I'm off to sleep. Enjoy your rest. Of course. You as well. I really want to say that you as well. I just said, like, you as well. Um, may I? Yeah, roll inside. 20. Yeah, she seems genuinely concerned about whether or not you find rest. Fuck. Huh. It's just, man, come on, man. It's just an old grandma in the woods. Can't you trust it's that? It's just a no. hyena. No. It's old granny. Old granny, a hyena. Yeah, my yes, old granny in the woods. is a literal wolf. What you got against wolves, Huff. man? That's kind of racist. Huff, puff, and... Many things, uh... but I'm just thinking literally Little Red Riding Hood. We've got a dog-like creature that's an old grand. I don't know why you're so worried. She's just a regular knoll. Yeah, she's a old. Knoll. <laughs> yeah, just a regular knoll. No regular knoll. Regular knoll. It's almost like she's gonna turn into a werewolf or something. I think she's oh, gonna turn into a gnome. <laughs> she certainly will not be a ganelf. Will she be? Will she werewolf turn into a gnome? Gnome, gnome comfy. What's that, wait, what's that? Gnome comfy, un, unwerewolf. An unwerewolf. I think you're talking. Oh, what if she's just an unwerewolf? Florida, where she just man. turns into a gnome when it's Florida. nighttime. <laughs> God, un I figured it out. Fucking hell. She's an unwerewolf. <laughs> you mean M? M werewolf knucklehead. Come on. That's not actually how English words cue dough brain. Shut up, you bitch. <laughs> oh, he sure got me that time. Oh god. <laughs> I can't leave the station on <laughs> I'm kidding. I can't on werewolf on you. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Uh the old woman kind of hobbles into the screened off room, kind of pushing back the bearskin screen and you can hear her generally getting ready for bed. The room is yours. Are there any like, are there any, like peepholes in the, um, while well, she's trying to move into the hide place door thing? Um, roll investigation. Uh, can't it be perception? No. No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, that's how yeah, with the 14, how kind of looking through the wall, you don't see any necessary, like, peepholes necessarily. But the bearskin doesn't completely cover the opening if you wanted to peek through that. Pervert. Well, now I'm not gonna do it. Fuck you. Good. <laughs> Alright, good. I'll get, I'll get ready for bed then. Polio is already getting ready to bed, dude. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Okay. Are you gonna set watches tonight? I mean, we're right now. Nah, I trust this old lady. It's kind of, it was kind, it would kind of be rude. But you know what? Hey, Alan. Yeah. What if I just don't take a rest and I just stay, stay up? You'll have to roll against exhaustion. Fuck. Never mind then. No, you should do it. No fucking exhaustion, Make dude. Make sure I don't get eaten alive, because she wants to eat me as a rabbit. 
Num num num. Okay, Alan, what what if I just take one half of a watch and I go to bed? I do a middle watch when I wake myself up in the middle of the night. Alright, here's to know if we actually know if this person is okay or not. Does this room have any taxidermy in it? If it does, then we stay up all night. <laughs> I don't want to um, get exhaustion, though. Well, there's a decent number of various pieces of animal that are used as decoration or utility, uh, such as the bearskin kind of curtain between you the notice? living space and the <laughs> bedroom. Alan, right, you know these you things have a utility lot of rabbit hides. Any of them? Any of them? Mm -hmm. pure any rabbit hide? Any um, rabbit hide or anything? Porcupines and shit. Good <laughs> porcupines on the floor. The most, de the most purely decorational things that you notice that don't like have a big purpose are a few candles that appear to have like sconces made out of bones. Um, like smaller, smaller animal bones that are just held up against the wall. They and don't I seem like they provide are. much light, but there's a few, a few of them. I guess we really are pretty paranoid, huh? Yeah, let's go to bed. Yeah. yeah. So no watches? No. I mean... Sally is doing a right watch because he's unrespectful first second or third watched i'll do second. i'll do i'll i'll do the first actually. okay i'll oh, yeah. stay up go a ahead bit. Roll a perception check. i stay up a bit and i'm like man i want to go to bed oh fuck 13. yeah with a 13 uh after a little while the sounds from the other room stop um a little while longer, there's just a peaceful cottage in, in the fringe of the woods next to the mountains. I just fall asleep at the end of the ship, then. Yes, Owen, you have. Well, shit. <clears throat> oh, but Owen, it is your watch. I'm going to use my portent and have a 15 total. Okay. Yeah, with a 15, um, you kind of stay up sitting on the couch. It's dark outside and dark inside as well. So not much to see or look at, but you kind of stay up anyways, just tickled by a hint of unease about this place. This homely cottage so far away from all of civilization. Did anyone say they were getting up for a third watch? Uh, no. Leo, Leo's going to bed. Gilda, I don't know what Gilda's doing. If you want Gilda to take a third watch, she will. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Where's the old trust? Come on. I, I, I just stay up because I wanted to stay up. That's my excuse. I'm not tired as I fucking <laughs> passed out. I don't have a curfew. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you'll have to find that out later. I, I play oh, on my Nintendo DS up at night. Um, <laughs> yeah. You all come to consciousness still in the living room. Don't attack. It's a new day. Have I been poisoned? Arms, legs, all the yep. fingers. Do you still have everything you expected to? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling no. good. You da, 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 da. Hey guys, I have spells again. <sighs> After a few minutes of you being up, the elderly woman makes her way out of her own room. Ah, 
Good morning. Breakfast? I mean, good morning. Good morning. Yes, <laughs> Poyo. Breakfast. Yeah! Come on, let's get the ingredients together. She kind of voluntold you to help her in the garden a little bit. And it's about it's about 45 minutes before you actually start putting breakfast together. Just what, once the, you've even gathered with, even with everything. The three of us? Yeah. Huh. The garden is a little bit spread out just due to the nature of the soil here. Um, and also she'd run out of a few herbs that she wanted to use in breakfast, so she sent a couple of you along the cobblestone path to collect them, but once everything's together, she begins frying up a single egg along with some carrots and mushrooms and other various vegetables. Squash. After a few minutes, you have breakfast. She doesn't stop smiling throughout the whole term of breakfast. Insight check. Roll. Critical. For the 19? Uh... One of these days. She just seems like she's happy to have company over. Lonely old yeah, grandmother lonely. out in the middle yeah. of the woods and all. But I don't believe her. But I do. That's the problem here, you see. Oh, yeah, also does apparently. I don't think Gilda cares. That's For the purposes of Eden not currently being here, yeah, Gilda doesn't care. Um, but yeah, you finish your breakfast. It's delicious. Magic and delicious. You second breakfast. part ways with the old Noel woman. We wave goodbyes. Why? She nods. I wave goodbye to Phyllis, but not the other one. <laughs> I Come wave, back again I sometime. I wave to the other one, but not Phyllis. <laughs> we will, don't you worry. Hot psych. I totally fooled her. You just kind of comb your fucking comb your ears back. <laughs> I totally fooled her. <laughs> Would someone like to roll for the day's travel? I do. Yeah. Six. That's a six. roll again. Please be a nine. Mm, try again. Damn it. That is not a nine. Mm, Fifteen. Try again. I'm waiting for it. We we encountered another dragon corpse, guys. We in, we yeah. encountered a dragon. Uh, the weather is still a little bit groggy from yesterday, but mm -hmm. you make it through all right. Nothing particularly interesting happens. You're well and truly out of the mountains now. Also... We managed to make it through the full, uh, through a full three hours without me having to retrocast, guys. Yeah. So we're moving at a slightly fast pace, and I only have to stay for 20 minutes instead of 30. Yep. Hey, Flavion, can you retrocast my bread? It's melting. Um... I'll say, any of you who has access to the scroll, uh, the VAC scroll, can roll an yeah. intelligence check. Oh. Oh. I don't know who actually has it right now, but I will 
I Poyo is yeah, Poyo has basically always been having it. Yeah, it's mine. Uh, with the seventeen, you guess you've got probably another three days worth of travel before you reach uh, Lithostein Harbor. Guys, let's make it to a city before the end of the session. Come on, let's go. Are there yet? Go ahead and um, y'all setting up camp for the night. Yeah. Go ahead and if you're setting watches, go ahead and set your watches. Do we do the same I'll thing for last watch time? this time and be a ding dong? I'll take last uh -huh. watch because last watch means you've had your long rest by the time you wake up, correct? That is true. So yeah, I'll take... I would get yeah. A uh, essentially, the way I'm considering uh, your long rest with watches is 12 hours. Each watch is four hours. Mm -hmm. Um. It is so you a keep long watch for session. four hours and then you sleep for eight. Or you sleep for four, keep watch for four, and then sleep for four. Or you sleep for eight, and then keep watch for four. Man, I hate um, being the person in the middle. Yeah, the middle shift is the suckiest out of all of them. Um, no mechanical okay. effect, but it's definitely the least fun. Thanks a lot, Leo. It's all yours. Aw. Uh. But yeah, that's how I've been considering. Obviously, long rests without a watch are just eight hours. So taking watch does mean you're spending longer time of the day. resting. Hey, that's my work shift. Dude. <laughs> totally anyway. too So, who's on first watch? Me, but I'll Leo. go. Roll perception. Ding dong. Ding dong. The witch is dead. 21. Which is dead. That's actually only a, what, 14? <laughs> Nothing around the campsite catches your uh, attention, but Attenure? on the horizon, um, in the direction that you're traveling, you can see... Almost looks like a massive obelisk. Um, oh. or like a, like a really big mushroom. It's you a can't, giant like, mushroom. Maybe you can't, like, see it. Uh, you mostly see it by based on you can't see the stars in that section of the sky. Is it perhaps uh mm, tall? <laughs> it is in fact very tall. Also appears to be decently far away. Oh, so it might not be tall. Got it. Might. It's oh, one it's of those. Super tall. Is it super tall? If it's super Superman. tall, you gotta tell me what it is. That's how this works, hey, it's right? It's taller than you. It's taller than Leo. Yeah, it's taller than me, right? So, that ends your watch. Unless you have anything. Damn, I guess. Whoever's not next, it. go ahead and roll perception. Oh boy, let's fail this. Let's go! Six. Yeah, with the six, you definitely don't notice anything out of the ordinary. Uh, you find yourself kind of dozing off throughout the whole watch. Third watch. Guys, that's what we need. Go ahead, roll. Wait. No. Seven. Seven. Roll my perception. Eighteen. Um, yeah, you'll notice the same mushroom-shaped absence of stars off in the distance that the Unitas noticed. But does it beyond that, and a few curious animals, nothing. Does it look like an object, or is it just a, a missing thing? I think it's just an object list. You're... Yeah. With only an 18, you're not entirely sure. Okay. It's... It, it definitely could be some kind of object that's blocking out the starlight, but it could also be something else. You just know that it's vaguely mushroom-shaped and appears rather tall. Even at this distance. 
okay. I don't like where that's going, but okay. Oh god, yeah, a big mushroom in, in the middle. Oh. There's a giant mushroom in the sky. So. Mushroom, mushroom. Who wants to roll for the day's travel? I do it. Come on, baby, give me a new pair of sandals. Eels. Fuck. I guess I'm again. eels. Okay. Mm, try again. Sandals. Huh. We found a dead body. It's gaping. What part of it is gaping? Yes. The part in my heart. And you're uh -oh, too no, late. That's the heart behind. Oh shit. Exactly. You just have this trail of dragon blood behind. <laughs> Man, maybe this is Hansel and Gretel. <sighs> yeah. Um. So far, your uh, your day's travels has been. Relatively uninteresting. Um, the warm-ish uh, fall weather that you've been experiencing uh, is starting to fade. And in the light, you can see now Leonidas and Thaliard, the vaguely mushroom-shaped uh, object that you've seen the past night, it has a green texture up top. Uh, and the stem of it looks like it's got some kind of knot in it, maybe a third of the way up. Um, but you don't reach it over the course of the day. And you find a decent spot to set up camp. And I only have a spell for it again. Yep. Uh... And Eden is here! Yes, because I had my Lark character stolen from me and put into the Shredder against my will. So I oh. really want to play. <laughs> Welcome to the game. You never left. Welcome to yep. Sad Boy. <laughs> um, catch you up on what happened. Basically, Valiard woke up with, uh, woke up like inside the Dragon Heart. Um, with a new kind of, like, orange stained glass looking, uh, dragon claw in place of his missing hand. And some new abilities. Um, and you encountered a cottage in the middle of the, kind of in the fringe between where the mountains start to end and the forest starts to begin. Uh, where an old knoll woman was living in peace. Uh, and she was very kind. She sold you a bag of holding and a, po uh, and a healing potion and let you spend the night in her cottage and cooked you breakfast. Uh, so and that not didn't, gonna kill us. That did not stop you from being her. suspicious, however. Uh, but we you left suspicious. the cottage without issue. And you're still on your way to Stein Harbor. Maybe about two days worth of travel more. And you've just stopped for another rest. Neat. Setting watches for the night? I'll go first. I'll go last. Okay. I guess I go middle since Jordan's on. Wait, I need per uh -huh. Perception, yes. I purposely yes. didn't say anything, so I wouldn't take a watch. Ha ha. Got him. I know what oh, to do way, on my by watch. The way, guys, I got new dice. Wait, no. Full Wait, no, I'll take my watch. <laughs> Damn. Damn. That was oh. almost really, really bad. Oh, it was still bad. pretty damn bad. One but it's more, not a nap one. A seven. It yeah. could have been a seven. I mean, at the same time, I just rolled my two new D20, metal D20s, and I rolled double nat ones. Because <laughs> they're metal, bro. So I caught That's pretty metal. One. <laughs> and I made it in that too. 
that mm. is canon, it happened, and no one can tell me otherwise. Nope. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over the course of your watch, you don't see anything necessarily out of the ordinary. Uh, you're tired from the journey so far and from just kind of silently side-eyeing the rest of the party as they were up to their usual shenanigans. But your watch goes by without issue. Who's up for second watch? Me. Fuck you, Leo. Go ahead and roll your perception check. Yeah, this is gonna be bad. What? Ah! <laughs> well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as you're kind of sitting watching the camp, you notice maybe about 50 feet from the camp a set of stones like kind of flat roundish stones three of them stacked on top of each other okay and it seems intentional I go over to it okay um there was a fourth stone it? that you didn't see from your vantage point earlier that was kind of okay. hidden behind a root. The whole set kind of is sitting on top of a patch of dirt that's kind of surrounded by a couple of roots. Kind of like a small pocket in the base of a tree. Yeah. Babe propaganda. I push it down. You push it down? Mm-hmm. Uh... It doesn't descend very far. Oh. Uh, two point. Just as much as the earth beneath it can compact, which is not much at all. Do I find any bugs over there? Roll an investigation check. I got an eight. Um, there seems to be a colony of ants leaving a few roots over underneath the same tree. Okay. Anything else, Poya? Yeah, I just, uh, I'll wake up the yard and go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> Talyard, go ahead and roll perception for your watch. I'm first going to roll my portent, and Alexa can get to fudge. I don't know that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. I, I need to change one number. Uh, I'm still gonna roll perception. Well, do you do you regret that? No, because failing is fun. Yeah, after maybe yeah, yeah. about fifteen minutes of being on watch, you just kind of say, "Ah, uh, nothing's happened. Nothing happened when we were in the weird woman's cottage. Nothing's happened recently. I'm just gonna go to sleep." And you do. That is certainly a string of words that I didn't know that would come out of your mouth today, Alan. You all come to consciousness the next day. Uh. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Just a couple of days of this. Would someone like to roll for the... Uh, Eden. 
Yeah. Trap Eden. Just a straight D20. Eleven. Okay. As you are walking towards your destination, Lithestein Harbor, uh, you finally reach the large mushroom shape that you'd been kind of approaching over the course of the past couple of days. There's a lar a massive tree, maybe 150 feet tall, growing rooted to a stone that is held up by an opposing tree trunk underneath it, maybe about 100 feet tall. And the roots of the two trees seem to kind of intertwine, and the branches of the tree on the bottom are spread out along the ground, as if the tree had been inverted, rooted on this particular chunk of rock that is that it's currently holding aloft. The whole structure is probably about 350-ish feet high. It's massive and intimidating. So it was tall. Anyone who'd like to, go ahead and roll a perception check. Brilliant. You know what? <laughs> the next person who's thinking of... Is anyone else thinking of roll? Oh, wait, everyone's already rolled. God damn it. <laughs> you sit there yeah. with your only lat one. Leonidas and Poyo, you recognize that... Um, just under the stone held in the middle of these two trees... Um, there appears to be a set of carvings that rings around the lower tree trunk, almost like a spring. That doesn't look natural. That's because it probably isn't. I, uh, you, you see my eyes glow. Draconic eyes, whoa. And I, uh, Eldritch Sight, Alan. Ah, uh, that's your glow. detect magic? Mm-hmm. There appears to be a slight shimmer of abjuration magic covering the entire structure, but beyond that, nothing. You're a bit out of range to see specifically the text, but yeah. all pieces of the structure that you can see are kind of shimmering faintly with abjuration magic. I kind of look at Leo, and I just kind of shrug. It's a giant mushroom. Do you want to get closer to see what that is? Or do we want to give this thing a wide berth? So is it actually a giant mushroom, or is it like a mushroom-shaped building, or...? It's... It's two trees that are connected kind of in the middle by a massive chunk of earth. And they both appear to be rooted. The one on the bottom is rooted to that chunk of earth and seems to have grown upside down. And the one on top kind of grows up and then blossoms out and its canopy was forming the 
mushroom shape that you guys have seen from a distance. Oh, okay. Yeah. No mushrooms, trees. I, I, I was was said that. Polio, Polio said that as a joke then. <laughs> funny, funny. But yeah, Polio just kind of goes towards it. Okay. As you start to get closer, you start to have to pick your way through the uh, branches and leaves of what would be the canopy of the lower tree that is wedged partially into the ground. Could I roll a nature check to see if this is naturally occurring or if something, like, did this to the tree? Sure, roll a nature check. Can I help? Damn. <laughs> yeah. We'll you can certainly check. roll if you'd like. Okay. I'm going to, never mind, I'm going to take the 18 of my portent and get 22. Okay. The I'm people gonna... and the dice hate me today. <laughs> mm. Um... You, Thaliard, are aware that the Shattered Isles had once been a single or multiple floating islands in the uh, floating islands of rain or the floating isles of the Betrayer Peaks that had drifted and then fallen. It appears that the lower tree had been growing in that um, floating island, and then its root base had become separated from the rest of it, and it had landed upside down. Yeah. And then continued growing up above the chunk of land that its roots had brought with it. So these two trees with their two canopies really are the same tree that had just refusing to, refused to die after crashing down upside down onto the surface of this island after more than a mile's worth of fall. You can see the ancient scars in the old lower tree's trunk from the stresses of falling and bearing the brunt of that impact. You can also see the carvings up near the base of the lower tree, maybe about 90 feet off the ground. Hmm. Hmm. I walk up towards the tree. Okay. Yeah, uh, getting closer to the trunk is a little bit difficult. You're having to pick your way through what once was the canopy of this great tree before its fall. I'm assuming I can reach it, though. Yeah, it's just difficult terrain. And I'm going to... And just kind of for about five feet every six seconds or so I'm just gonna have past five feet in like 30 feet in length over the course of what however many seconds that would be what's what's six times six 36 that one over the next 36 seconds you see almost lines going up through the tree um, as I just see what ha what casting uh, in this case minor illusion would, would do if anything and I project it onto the tree and going up 
Um, the illusion doesn't seem to have any effect beyond what you had intended the illusion to portray. Okay. We said there was a abjuration magic on it, yeah? Very faint, yes. Very faint. I take a step back towards the rest of the party. Okay. I would like to try something. Blue, you said it had abjuration magic. Cord. I did not say anything about it. Oh, great. <laughs> well, did you catch any magical means at all? I think I saw a hint of aberration shit. Detection. Um, I know what I said. How strong was it? Not strong, but like... Not like little amount. Like right, kind of in the middle. When he says that, I turn towards the tree, which I'm okay. assuming the party is less than 120 feet from. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, as that, far as I, I can... I went towards it. As far, as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty sure Leonidas went towards it as well, so would Gilda have followed to the base of the trunk of the tree? Yep. Okay, so yeah, you're all there at the base of the tree. Okay. Uh, I toss a firebolt at it. Uh, the yeah, firebolt man. scorches the surface of the tree, but doesn't catch it on fire. That was not the intention, and um, what I intended to check was what happened. Okay. Yeah, doesn't. It seems that the tree was protected against the igniting aspect of a firebolt, but not the damage. Nature killer. Nature AC. What? I was merely just checking. Abjuration magic protects from a variety of things. No, I thought, they, like, whenever you said nature killer, I thought you said that in play, and I'm like... Gilda will throw hands. He threw a fireball at a tree. You did? No, I did. Uh, oh, Thaliar did. Thaliar did. The abjuration magic would have protected it anyway. I did a small... In essence, I took a... Spark. Spark. And I... Threw it at the... So I meant no ill will towards the tree. Still looks like I heard the tree testing. though. I was merely testing the abjuration magic to see how strong it was. I'm gonna pull up my halberd and point it at him and say, "If I see you hurt nature one more time, you've already been doing all kinds of sketchy shit, but that's gonna be the last fucking straw." I mean, eating her a dragon heart wasn't. Does Does anyone want to tell her about the rock? <laughs> we weren't awake for the rock. Oh no, no one was. <laughs> yep. Thank God. Note to self: have Kindle as a what? <laughs> Amazing. I mean, rocks don't fucking count, but like. <laughs> don't rocks hurt nature. nature. Rocks don't count, but don't hurt they're nature. Not living nature. Yeah, they're not. I mean, they're not flora or fauna. They're fucking rocks. But if you touch your, but what if the rocks are alive? Just, 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 when, just. What if when what, you touch it, it hardens? What if the hills are alive? Rock, rocks are actually with the sound of music. Oh, 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 oh. rocks are soft. Rocks they fall, just get... everyone dies. They just Amen. get hard. Hey. <laughs> oh, I the boulder! That every day before D &D. The boulder! Hey. Wait, if rocks fall and everyone dies, does that mean new characters? No. 
Hell yeah. Oh. Oh. No, we ascended it to the next level of the campaign. Taxes. Ugh, death and taxes. We're the IRS guys. <laughs> Amazing. The Honestly, that'd be kind of fun. Playing as like a group of IRS agents just trying to force people to pay taxes. Bro, anyway, just, just back a whole to bunch the high fantasy collecting. setting instead. It can still be high fantasy. What Bro, are you talking whole... about? Back to our Bro, high fantasy setting of uh, busting of taxes. Jeff Bezos the God Lich for tax fraud. This is no. canon now. This We're gonna change now. the tide of your wallet. Anyways, so you're all there before the tree. I elegant fight again. I'm guessing there's still like, uh. Yep, there's a faint abjuration magic. It's a little more yeah. concentrated where the firebolt had, uh, impacted, but beyond See? that. Ow, my ear. Did I stutter? I won't hesitate, bitch. <laughs> Neither will I, bitch. Eden didn't get the reference, bitch. <laughs> What's I this won't reference hesitate, supposed to be, bitch? bitch? Saw so you hanging out with Caitlin the other day. Re Rebecca, I can ex I won't hesitate, bitch! What the fuck is that from? Fine. You wouldn't oh, get it, you're ew. uncultured. No. Okay. I'm uncultured. I am mean? so much more cultured than you, and you know it, Alan. Bullshit. You don't know vines. Bullshit. You don't know I, fucking, I, ref like, I refuse to have classical. vines part of our culture. No. Nope. Vine, vine is an, is... an integral have, part of our culture. I have classy culture, thank you. Hmm. But we have internet anyway. culture, and where are anyway, we posting anyway, these things again? Anyway, on the internet. God damn it, Jordan! Quick, say something funny to distract I everyone. I couldn't hear you over the vine screaming. Don't worry, I've made the perfect thing ever. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. That was a very funny joke, Jordan. I also, I also, I also think that would make a decent campaign. Yeah. Anyway, can That's we get back the to the irony. game? Yep. Uh, You're still wow, kind of standing there in front of that tree. Thing. That is sure indeed a tree. A massive tree. Oh, a massive! Is, you could say it's. To this tree? You could say it's tall. Like, didn't you say there was like it writing is. on it or something? Yeah, there's no. a kind of like a writing kind of in like the shape of a spring um, oh, yeah, maybe yeah, about yeah. 90 feet up 90 feet yeah uh, can I try to climb it I was about to say can I try yeah. to climb the tree both of you can both of you roll athletics Okay. Please why do the that. dice hate me why do the dice love me what did I fucking do fine you know what if they're climbing the tree I might as well um, athletics Yo, Sorry, that. Leo. Bunnies can't climb. You got a nat one. Bunnies don't want to climb. Or nah. <laughs> Eleven. Uh, so yeah, uh, you all three start climbing the tree. Um, unfortunately, the lower section of the trunk is, like I said earlier, covered in the ancient scars of its fall a long time ago. So even yeah. though. Um, Gilda and Thaliard, even though you're not necessarily planning out your travel and just kind of climbing in the general direction of where you want to go, you don't encounter too much difficulty. Okay. But, Poyo, you get there far before them. I you can see the writing. It. Climbing with hooves has to be, like, hard as fuck. Yeah. I mean, we... mountain goats? Mountain they don't horses. climb, they jump. Yeah. So do mm -hmm. so do bunnies. Fuck you, Jordan. I, I would assume that that would be most of the way that you would be climbing. Oh. Is mountain goading up the trunk. Mountain goading? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> mm. 
Anyway. Yeah. So you get to the writing. It's in text that you recognize. This appears to be ancient core. Oh. <laughs> Does it say rump? Uh, the ancient language or the runic language oh, is no. distinct from ancient core. It oh, very oh, distinct. Man. I have been starting doing the translation process. Very slowly. Very slowly. <laughs> Wait, so which language which language did I learn the word knowledge in? Was uh, that ancient core or, or ancient language? The only word that you know in the runic language would be dragon. Yeah. Mm, and they don't like when I use that one. They don't like it. <laughs> Karnav told me specifically to tell you not to say it. Current. Mm, 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 current. But, yeah. Says the bitch. Anyway. What so, can we see at the top of the tree? You haven't reached the top of the tree. Just We're the, looking uh, at the writing. Yeah, just the oh. base of the first trunk. You're Wait, directly under the... we have writing? The... Yeah, there's writing on the tree. Uh, yeah, how, like how many, uh... How many, uh... Hours have we been traveling? Do I have any Probably spell four or five. So I have one spell slot. Yeah. Right, guys. <laughs> Time to do it. I'm going to place my hand on the writing. Okay. I'm going to use my last spell slot of the day. Would that be a first or a second level spell slot? Second. Okay. As you watch as um, Thad dips into his components pouch holding on and just grabs some soot and salt that he kind of has mixed together and he throws it onto the page onto the the tree and the, the carving the, writing, the carving the words <laughs> <laughs> he throws it onto the carving and uh, you'll just see a faint glow as it's starting to be as he's starting to be able to comprehend it or try to. Interestingly enough, although you cast the spell through the uh, soot and salt that you had produced, mm -hmm. you find most of the energy of your casting goes through the claw that you're using to hold on this brand new draconic claw. Um. Huh. That is interesting. But yeah, go ahead and roll a intelligence check with advantage. Yay. Yeah. 23. Ooh. 23. You managed to decipher the text. It's a poem. Wait, wait, wait. I need to get my notes up. Let me get Discord up. You think I've been taking notes today? <laughs> uh, where is it? I'll wait until you're ready. Sloven? Yes. No, it's my session. What session are we on now? Session. This should be nine. Nine. Yeah, nine. 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 Listen, it is the trees who tell the future in whispered songs through the leaves. Who will sing it then after they are gone? Who will show us the way, teach us our songs? Hollow places will become hallowed ground where trees once stood. Listen now while they still stand, while they still sing. Who lives, who dies, who tells your story? I do not apologize, but I also will need the rest of that. I got, I got, listen, it is the trees who tell the future and whispered songs through the, through their 
something le there we go. Thank you. And um because of how things work uh, I'm going to uh, recount the poem to them in my best memory of it as Thaliod. Okay. Are you ready for this, Alan? Listen, it is the trees who tell the future in whispered songs through the leaves. Who will sing it then after they are gone? Who will show us the way? Teach us our songs. Hollow places will become hollowed ground. Where trees once stood. Listen now. While they still stand. While they so still sing. Sounds like the tree fucking agreed with me to leave it the fuck alone. No. It sounds like someone leaving a message. Um, Can I roll intelligence to try and, like, decipher it? To see if it's a message or just, like, words? Can I roll for an idea? Uh, roll a straight wisdom check, Eden. Uh, these fucking no. dice. Man, no. it's a bad day for you. Can I bad try? day for the dice. Like, I have not rolled above a five this entire it fucking time. No. Can I try to decipher it? Sure. Roll a wisdom check. Natural 20. Oh my god. The dice <laughs> really do so hate bad. you, Eden. <laughs> Jesus. I feel so bad. First off, everyone at fucking LARP hates me, and then they take my character and just destroy it whenever I can't even do anything, because I didn't do anything to deserve it. And then the dice hate me. The dice can hate I, me more often than you. The dice hate me more often than I'd like to admit, so please do not think it was just you. Yes. And please, no, it's just please, that you net 20. Today, today is a, a bad lot. day. Try yeah. try this. Refresh your refresh your roll 20. Trust me. It sounds weird, but me and Al have seen it actually work. I have. Can confirm. <laughs> he literally watched me go from a natural 1 to a natural 20. So... <laughs> But yeah, um, with oh, a natural 20, uh, seems to be that, first of all, you notice that there is a tiny signature carved in along with the poem. It's simply signed, The Wild Gypsy. That's pretty wild. Fantastic. Wild. Um, wild. It seems to be a message about maintaining a balance with nature. You gather that the author of this poem viewed this tree to be significant in some way. Uh, yes, I'm aware that that is a slur, but that is also the Twitter handle of the person who is being credited for this poem, because I did not write this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. But the message of the poem seems... It seems to be written from a sort of naturalistic perspective the author seems to think that this tree in particular seemed to have some importance which is probably true given its extreme resilience in the face of literally falling miles from the sky and continuing to grow around its encumbrance. It 
seems to be an encouragement to listen and attune to nature before it's gone. Balliard, you find yourself thinking back to home. home. And not just home, but some of the places that you had used to go that you watched slowly become corrupted by the Fearlands. Places that were once carefree and safe havens that became dangerous and off-limits. You all would uh, start to see as after reading it out and Thalia taking a moment to consider it you will notice that uh, Th Thalia's crying quite profusely Probably, yeah. Uh, probably some of the tears would hit Leo below. <laughs> Leo gets is knocked there, out by a is there a, Is there a ledge nearby where he could sit and look out beyond the tree? Um, if you climbed up onto the piece of earth that is that the roots of the trees kind of wrap around and are cradling, you mm -hmm. could. Yeah. Thalia just goes and tries to climb up there. Okay, roll an athletics check. That is much better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's decent, but as you're kind of on the underside of this piece of earth, you start to have a little bit of trouble uh, and you start to lose your grip. The rest of you notice Thaliard starting to climb a little higher in the tree and uh, begin to lose his grip in that way. Do you do anything? Me. Anyone. As you're watching Thaliard um, start to lose his grip, maybe about 100 feet off the ground. Oh no, not this again. I'll climb a little higher. Okay, roll an athletics check. There we go. There you go. Yeah. Are you trying to get to him, or...? No, I'm just trying to, like, climb up to where, like, the runes, or wherever the writing was. Uh, as far as I'm aware, you'd already climbed up there. Oh, cool. Then I'm just gonna climb to the top of the tree, or as high up as I can. I'll say with that 18, you get to the top side of the, uh, kind of bit of land that's held suspended in the air. As you're climbing up, you watch Thaliard lose his grip and fall. Hey, does any of us have a feather falling? Nope. I can't get that spell. Oh. 
like can. Well, <clears throat> Thaliard, as you plummet the hundred feet down to the ground, you take forty-two points of bludgeoning damage from the fall. I'm unconscious. I walk over and spare the dying. <laughs> I don't even say slap him. I slap him with spare the dying. <laughs> okay. Thaliard rolled a d4. Two. Be unconscious for two hours. Time to replicate that in real life. I kind of look <laughs> up at Gilda, and I just kind of look back down, and I'm like, huh. I just kind of look down, and then I say, the tree doesn't like you, does it? <laughs> you just It just cuts back to you unconscious to how you are. <laughs> I'm just looking at the walk that I don't have after like two 10 things. seconds. I'm like, all right, two you know things. what? No, two things. One, you said that so quietly for a hundred feet distance. Two, you see him lying there on the ground, not moving. <laughs> and probably twitching a lot, huh? It's more for comedic effect than anything else, not gonna lie. Yeah. Because yeah. Gilda thinks it's funny. Fair enough. Besides, the cleric's down there. Yeah. Maybe maybe it what? was oh. good for Leo to stay back. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, with I the guess two I'll hours be of Thaliard being unconscious, yeah. you won't be able to make any more progress that day before yeah, you that. uh As soon as end I spin a die on him, I'm going to look at my watch that I don't have on my arm for like ten seconds and then slap him with cure wounds. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, you just, you Roll just the healing for that. One, two. But awful. Yeah. <laughs> Sally, are you again? Six hit points. <laughs> oh, that was a... Welcome was back to the land point. of the living. Oh. Thank you for that uh, very much. Here, uh, let me give you some more, and I'll specifically no, 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 only. No, Don't no save, I insist. Save your energy. Don't use it. Your pool. I'll still reach my hand over, and I'll specifically touch his. Um, I his uh, as soon as he tries to, uh, as soon as he tries to reach over, I move out of the way. No, leave it. I keep on. Reaching my hand over. You're hurt. Will you just let me help will, you? Will Will you just stop? Okay. Please just leave it. I, I climbed back down. By the way. Okay. Uh, roll in athletics. We're not far of resting. It is yeah, fine. you can climb down just fine. I will get some. Oh, my, my wounds will heal. By the moment. They will heal faster if I heal them. They're just. It's fine. Please. Doesn't look fine. I can Deep move. Egg. I can walk. I can talk. I'm fine. No, thanks to Lero here. Doesn't mean you're fine. If you can walk and talk, that doesn't mean you're fine. If I can walk and talk, I will. I am fine. Okay, what if you're a... What if you're a beheaded, decapitated head? Well, you can still walk. You can still walk and talk. Decapitated head. Well, no, I can't walk or talk because of my... You know what I mean, that... mind. Yeah. Put both of you through You know what, Thaliard? If you do not wish to be healed, then so be it. And I'll continue walking. 
Does Leo run into a tree? Gilda. Roll yes. a perception check for me. Da -da -da. And back yeah, to the cool. norm. Okay. Back to the dice hating me. What a dicey back to situation. Back the, the dicey situation. I'm already making it to a while I'm up in the tree, can I scope out, like, the general area? Like, not, like, immediate, but, like, can I see, like, the coast from here kind of thing? Like, you can. Did she, see, um, did she the, see the harbor? You can. It's probably about maybe another day and a half's journey away. You mm. won't reach it by the end of tomorrow, but you'll probably reach it the day after in the morning. Nice. Do you climb down? Uh, I want to try to belay down. Wait, how far high ha am I? Because I uh, probably don't have about... the rope. With, uh, with the added part of the kind of land island that you're on top of, you're probably about 130 feet in the air. Damn, that is. I have not that much rope. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess I try to climb down. Athletics? Plug in. I'm gonna well, refresh. Shit. Um, yeah, Thaliard, Leonidas, uh, Poyo, you kind of glance up as you're getting ready to move out and waiting for Gilda to return back down to the surface. You see her climbing down and... Uh, right around the same spot where Thaliard was struggling, you see her start to lose her grip. Do you do anything? I literally have no sp oh, spells that can help. Leo? Yeah. Well, can I, I don't have spells. Spell she... I have spells that can help. But you I don't have don't the ha spell wait, slot. Wait, wait. I reach into Leo's pocket where he's been holding the emerald. Oh, yeah. You don't know where I'm holding that thing? I mean, your pockets are very organized, though. How do you know this it's is, not up you as don't know my organization? Yeah, exactly. This is, no, this is, fact, this is the canon fact, Leo. This is the canon fact. Thaliard, what's your passive? Thaliard, what's your passive perception? Eleven. Okay. Uh, Leonidas, Beautiful. roll sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. I'm not even trying to take anything. He's trying to take something from me. I know. Well, is just wait, wait, is he, he's rolling. You... Fuck. <clears throat> All right. Mm. Um, <laughs> Alan. Sally Art, was... call odds or evens. Alan, I was asking a question and you didn't. Mm. Too late. <laughs> Sally Art, call odds or evens. Even. Dude, I want odds. Oh, yeah. Fuck you, <laughs> Jordan. 18. Uh, so, yeah, Sally Art, you do know where on Leonidas' person he keeps that emerald. Okay, how far right, away I can totally survive okay. the fall. How far away yeah. is Gilda? Uh, she's about 110 feet up. Oh, shit. I'm just gonna yell I got it. <laughs> you can clearly see of, that she I doesn't got it. I just kinda lay back then. Um, I, 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 I use one of the charges in the Emerald to, to cast Tensor's Floating Desk and try and at least get it 20 feet above me so then she'll the fall will be at least reduced. You could at least ask for the damn crystal, you know. Okay. By the way, do you know how many? Do you know how many charges are on, in the Chaos Emerald? I do. How many? After I've There's just used twelve. One? More no, than four. I don't four. know. There's eleven now. now. But more yeah. than four. Yeah. Um. After a moment, Gilda, your grip slips and you fall. 110 feet cut down to 90 feet, we'll say, by the tensor's floating disc. Hey, that's two Can whole d6s. Can I roll athletics to try and land on my feet? Not from the side. Break your feet. Yes, but your ankles break. I didn't know you were a cat. You oh, take... come on. <laughs> you take 21 points of bludgeoning damage from the that's fall. That's a lot on that one. That. As you manage to 
uh, reach out and grab through some of the branches of the lower canopy before hitting the tensor's floating disc, which kind of sinks down to the ground as you hit it and absorbs a lot of the brunt of the fall. Thaliard really saved you some pain there. I could have taken it. Instead, I made sure you are alive. Be thankful and grateful for what you were given. We were lucky to have this emerald. Otherwise, I would not have been able to help you. I would have been fine. I was dead. I was you just and alive. I are both different. Are we? Yeah. I, 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 I'm a fucking, like, I'm not a druid, but, like, I, I'm with nature, nature is with me. I'm not gonna die falling out of a tree. Holy fuck, that rhymed. <laughs> hey, that should be a poem. Excellent. <laughs> On the other hand, I am a arcane student who was born and raised among nature. And, in fact, my mother was a druid. So as much as yes, I am not the same as you. And I'm polio! We are more alike than I think you <laughs> realize. I mean, I don't run away whenever I, things don't work out. I, kinda I cast cure Leo. wounds on myself casually. Should, should we um, this? Are you sure you're not going to use your, like, um, healing lay hands or whatever hands. the fuck the... Yeah, your lay on hands? I mean, I could, but then I'm, like, one below my max. I'll just use the lay on hands. Okay. Wee. Maybe I run yeah. away because I know what happens if I don't. And I hope you never find out what that is. I'm trying to see. How, how, what, how long do we have left of the day's travel? A half end of the day, isn't it? Uh, day just a half. couple hours more before. Okay. I cast Tensor's Floating Disc with the Emerald again, and instead of using a ritual cast so we can leave immediately. So now we got two. Or relatively charges. immediately. Yep. Uh, Leonidas, now that you kind of have an idea that that's what he's going for, are you going to let him use the emerald to cast that? As far as Leonidas is concerned, he supposed the emerald is his now. Wow. After, after casting with the emerald? Thalia just tosses it to Leonidas. I don't even bother to catch it. It fucking slams in your face and you got knocked out. Roll for death save. Dies of 1d4 crystal damage. It seems it poses more purpose to you rather than me, doesn't it? Only for the travel it has. I've kept it in the back of my mind. But... No, I think you should keep it in the front of your mind. Leonidas, if we get into a combat situation in the next day and, and it will be all the more useful for you, wouldn't it? Or it would be useful to have someone who can heal us. I have alternate abilities that I can use. There's a person who wouldn't even want my healing. Because right now, there were people st still up on the tree. Gilda could have healed herself, but what if both Gilda and Poyo fell? Could have healed all of them. I wasn't gonna You fall. honestly underestimate my power of healing. I do not. I have seen clerical powers as well as yours in action. But when I am alive, then I will keep going. For right now, we are not in combat. And we only have half a day's journey left. If something happens, then I will ask for your aid. 
I mean, we have like strength. we have like a solid like day and a half. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, but like two hours left in the day is what he's saying. Oh, I thought you meant on the trip, and I'm like, nah. No, if I am. No, I, once. I thank you for your consideration of how I am doing. But save your energy. We still have a long day ahead tomorrow. Save my energy for what? Whatever may Something come. Something that isn't healing? I don't know. There is long days ahead. Just trust me, please. And with that, Thalad's going to start walking with the two tensors floating discs behind him, leaving yep. the emerald where it is. I'm going to slowly go down and pick up the emerald. Oh, you kind of put I'll the quote in his mouth. And just... You will see on it. Because Thalia isn't too far away, there is a small um, insignia on it. Um, oh crap, my brain's forgotten what it is again. It's in gold. I know, ex I know exactly what it is, hold on. And it is a, a, sh a, it's a shield with, yeah, symbol. with eight, uh, eight, wait. Let's make sure I could don't miscount this. Uh, with uh, eight symbols around it, uh, forming a uh, octagon. It's not that simple. It is now. It, it is. It, it really isn't. <laughs> it's my uh, head cannon now. And it's a shield, and inside the shield is a uh, is the image of a dragon. Um, and, um, from that, there is lines going out to each of these f eight circles that make up the corners of the octagon. And in each of those circles is a different symbol, um, each one relating to something separate. And I can tell you a bit more about those later. Yeah. So, you travel for a little bit. And eventually, after a couple more hours, find nice. a place to camp. Uh, do we want to end now, or do we want to wait till we get to Lithstein Harbor before we end? I think we wait should go till to we get to Lithstein Harbor. Okay. Uh, go ahead and set watches for the night, then, if you'd like. I will be I'll watch number watch. three. Oh. oh. <laughs> fight over it! Fight! Fight! One. Fight! <laughs> oh, I love how you just backed down. I was expecting to do a roll-off for it. <laughs> well, Leo, you really are bottom... That's hey. not Leo, that's Jordan. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> you're really wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what? Thank you. Why do I feel you. like... Why do I feel like later, uh... This is gonna be a fantastic quote. Like, in line with my let's, uh, shush. And then, oh my, can I fuck? I or my, oh, or, or my classic. This may be the dumbest thing I've ever done. I'll go for the middle one, right, middle watch, I guess. Okay. Um, Leonidas, go ahead and roll your perception for the first watch. Bonk. Okay. Roll another perception for me. 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Kurt tweeted again. this was the first day that Michelle, or not Michelle, uh, Gilda rolled and it didn't fucking rain. Oh <laughs> my god. You know there's with something wrong with the dice then. Um... Yeah. With your 13, you don't necessarily see much throughout the night. But with the 22, as you're kind of sitting there listening over the course of a few minutes you manage to piece together syllables from the rustle of leaves around you oh oh murmuring oh. a greeting oh oh, oh. how's the kids I'll murmur the greeting back. The trees ask your purpose. I simply say, exploration. The trees ask if you have seen what you wished to see. Come again, I say to the tree. Yes, question mark. <laughs> if I'm getting the question right. <laughs> Yes. Definitive yes. Final answer. Man. You're really getting ghosted by a fucking tree. Yeah, I'm getting ghosted by a tree. This feels bad, man. <laughs> the trees remain silent. Damn. After yeah, you're ghosted by a tree. Your watch ends. Who's next? Oh, yeah. I'll slowly, I'll slowly wake up Poyo. And as he's awake, I give him a nod. I nod back. I slowly reach for um, Poyo's bag, and I nod. May I? I shrug. I slowly yeah, open his good. bag and place the emerald in his bag, close it, and go to sleep. Huh. Huh. Oh, yeah. I Two perceptions. Seven and eleven. Yes. Yeah. Seven and eleven, motherfuckers. Yeah. Oh. Right, guys. Where's, where's the slushies? Come on, let's go. The slushies. Go. Unfortunately, with a seven, you don't see any slushies or anything else for that matter over the course of the night. Do I see a night. rock? Um. How many rocks do I see? Seven. But your watch passes without much interest. I guess it's Thaliard is last, right? Yep. Thaliard, two perceptions if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and roll your portents first. I did. Got a six and sixteen. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Eight. Fuck it, I'm using the 16 to get 17. Okay. Yeah. Once again, similarly to Leonidas, you don't see or notice anything, but you hear syllables strung together on the wind, murmuring a greeting. leaves of the trees around you rustle gently. Ask you what your purpose is. Had so long of answer. But home. In short. to find my way home. Home is wherever roots grow and water falls. Where friends bloom and winter is made gentler by their presence. Mm. You're not for your father's grove. Did you catch all that? Kind of. Um. Home is where roots grow and water falls. Where friends bloom and winter is made gentler by their presence. You're not for your father's grove. I will still try because they are my home and nothing will change that hmm. if you don't grow towards the sun you wither Maybe one day I'll be free to go to the sun. But for now, I'm not there yet. The gentle breeze continues to rustle through the leaves, but it's just noise now, no longer speech. I look up. Your at watch the sky. ends. Oh. Okay. You all come to consciousness. I am awake. Last day of travel. Oh boy, oh, who's gonna do the last thing? Oh, oh boy. I'll do the Me, because I've been wasting my spell done. slots for a full in 10 to But I haven't days. done in a while. Yes, you're, you're right. Nice. Jordan hasn't done it, I think, like, all day today. I've yes, done it once. Has. Yes, only once. once. Huh. Oh, never mind. Jordan, go. Bonk. 
Yeah. Serene. Roll again. Roll again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm, try again. Roll Nine. Again. Mm, try again. <laughs> nope, we, we've used both of those already. Roll again. Mm, try again. <laughs> try again. Wait. Roll again. Mm, try try again. again. <laughs> yeah, we've definitely used that one. Mm, try again. What? Roll oh. again. Technically, we've used it, but it's one of the rolls that just means nothing happens. So no, I'll let it one, slide. But it's the last day. Uh, Try again. It's the last day, man. It's the last day. It's the Try last again. day. Roll again. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> that, I think that's a roll oh again my... as well. Wait, no. <laughs> oh my god. You know what? Fuck you. Someone else roll. No, I'll do it. No, 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 no. See, I got it. See, that's see, a roll again. It. No, I see I got it. <laughs> not one! It's me! It's my not one! Let's go! Try it again. What other numbers do we have? Not many. I would exactly. say we've done nearly 20 days of travel. We <laughs> decided to fuck around, and we got lost. Then we found out. <laughs> Alan, use any of the numbers that have been rolled. No, oh, you should easy, easy, no, totally use this what, one no, right here. Use the nat one. Yeah, please. use the five. We use already had one. the nat one, remember? Oh yeah, Nine. we did. Shit. What number was the obelisk? Have we not had. Oh yeah. Did we have seven yet? Yeah. But hey, use that number. Twenty. Alan. We have. We have had not a had a twenty yet. It took <laughs> sort of, a lot of You know what? Sort of, of cheating, but you know what? It is sort of cheating. Cheating always prospers. But you know what? It's the last day of travel. We'll let it slide. <laughs> well, yeah. We get to we get to see the Noel again, guys. Let's We're gonna go. get a bunch of hate comments for cheating. <laughs> How uh, dare you want to do something interesting on the last day? I dare yeah. you try to have fun. Um. Maybe you travel for maybe about half a day, a little bit less, actually. Um. And you come across a, like, a dip in the ground. And mm -hmm. in that dip, there's kind of, like, a downward-facing cave opening in a small patch of rock. Um, almost, a, it doesn't necessarily appear like the stone was naturally occurring, but the mm -hmm. stone itself appears natural. It's almost as if someone had shifted uh earthed into stone here off it appears to be a rather shallow cave overgrown with vegetation but there's definitely something in there do you go in wait 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 we need to be careful about this was that any writing outside the cave. Because the last time we had, had a giant stone entrance, it was a giant maze. Yeah. Um, well, that was also just a random, like, archway in the middle of nowhere. Um, roll a investigation check. Investigation... 19. There is writing, but it's old and worn and faded. And covered in mosses and vines. Can I attempt to decipher it? Uh, sure. What do you want me to do? Straight intelligence. Gotta love it. 23. Ooh. What it's... is happening here? It's written in... 
almost like a new age core. Not ancient core, but it shares some similarities. Um, and you can't make out all the words. Some of them are too faded. But it says that this is a traveler's shrine of some kind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Obviously in disuse for quite some time. Interesting. Do you all want to head inside? It's uh, apparently a shrine of some sort, I believe. A shrine to uh, who? Do I know to who? I. Uh, that's one of the words you can't make out. Ah. But it does I'm say that it is a traveler's shrine. You get the you get the phrase traveler's shrine verbatim. It is a traveler's shrine, but it does not say who to. Might as well at least check it out. Yes. Um I never asked, um which day did you follow Leonidas? I thought I uh, answered this, didn't I? Probably. Possibly, but... But it's been kind to... of month, Not months. It's been kind of a couple weeks since then. Yes. That's an absolutely hilarious statement because two weeks in Lavenia is a month. Uh -huh. I just... I want to point out... It's been month... No, not month. It's been two weeks. <laughs> Shut it's up, Alan. It's a month since we initially met... So I just wanted to be sure. Uh, well, uh, the god that I follow is uh, called Elquine. Can I do a religion check to see if I know roughly who that is? I'm curious sure. if Poyo knows. So I'm, I'm roll, really roll. annoyed yeah. because I know who it is. <laughs> I do not know jack shit. That's I really uh -oh. do. <laughs> hey Owen, you know that whole blurb written about Elquine in our yes. lore documentations? Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, Lady Law is who you're on about and who you follow. Ah, uh, I take it you know her. I have read about the pantheon of Lavenia. Uh, the, ma the major gods, particularly, I have at least a cursory understanding of. Mamadran, Zahorus, Levani, Kiros, Elkone. I have at least a cursory knowledge of most, though not uh, in depth. Hmm. It could be literally any of the major or minor gods in the in sites. So a shrine can't hurt us, can it? <laughs> a shrine can't, but the god can. The god can, but that would then be a question of why the god would be interested in us. It might be disturbing their shrine, who knows? Then we'll tread carefully. With your 24 in religion, um, you know of and have seen Traveler's Shrines in the past. Mm -hmm. um, which deity they're dedicated to often varies depending on the region and the people who set it up. But the phrase Traveler's Shrine is used to indicate a place of rest and recuperation for folks on a pilgrimage or a long journey of some kind. It is meant to be used as a campsite, so to speak. Hmm. 
You've never seen one this run down, though. Shut up, Jordan. <laughs> no, that's totally the Moonweaver. Definitely. No, that's I think lovely. It's, that's I think totally it's Johnny Qatar. Johnny Qatar. It's not, not bro. It's Johnny Depp. The dragon yeah, of the east. Good. No, 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 no. <laughs> It's David Bowie. It's David Hasselhoff. Got him. Let's go. Jesus no, Christ, it's, it's Jason Bourne. <laughs> For those who don't Morgan, know, Jesus Christ. Morgan Freeman. Jordan just said the God's name, the Traveler, so... We're no, doing our whole words. Critical Role reference thing because we're they, all fucking they, nerds. They, and that's exactly why that. it's Just like a bunch of nerdy-ass voice actors character. who play Dungeons and Dragons. Shut the fuck up, Owen. Tyler, they cut all this out. Bones. I will add this out. Thank Which you. is why I'm gonna say a bunch of mean comments to Jordan. Hey Jordan, you always do that. You have two arms and legs, bitch. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, Jordan, how dare you have basic human anatomy? Come on, be like uh, Thalia. Let, let me just let me just hey, fix that no, Fal quick. Thalia does have one. One what? imaginary doesn't count. Yeah, we said what basic. You mean it okay, count. you're not basic. It's better than it's better than nothing. Green Lantern. Orange. Orange Lantern. No, it's it's also not a hard like construct. You know what, Tyler? How you do know you what? know? I don't believe. Tyler, you know what? Although Consider I, you can't speed. Anyway. Fuck. Let's go back to the uh. Let's get News. back to the session. T future Tyler. I'm gonna unsqueeze your three, lemonade. Two. God damn it. Future Tyler. Yeah. Cut back to us in five, four. No way. No way. I have something very lemonade. important. One. No. No, I have, no, wait. I have something very important. Ugh. You smell like you farted. Okay, three. Don't two, worry. I have Febreze. No. <sighs> That's because you shake Febreze like a fucking idiot. It says not five, to shake four, it. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. No. Start. Start. Ah, does the oh, man, we do like to take bed of the cha cha so sign. I also Tangent like to over. go to bed because I haven't gone to bed yet. Because I'm shut, I'm, shut, shut I'm, up, I'm... shut up. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, I have collected Valiant enters the shrine. So, uh, you guys enter the shrine. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, inside it's a small space, but homey. Um. The walls and carvings inside were likely once beautiful, but it's covered in moss and dirt and insects in a lot of places. Nature has really reclaimed this place. Um, and you can see a place where the vines are kind of holding the arm of a statue of what appears to be an old man holding a staff. But they're holding the arm that isn't hold the vines are just kind of have separated the arm that isn't holding the staff from the statue, and that stone arm is just kind of dangling by the vines. Um it's Kind of sad. The only clean place in the shrine is the... There's an alt, a small altar and a uh, bowl attached to the ground in front of the altar. Ostensibly for offerings. The rest of the shrine is just a mess. Mm. Is there any indication as to the deity? Uh, Other than the old man with the staff, no. Is, 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 sorry, yes. He's in the... Yeah. You, you don't have enough information to make out necessarily who this shrine is dedicated to. 
So you, you said Old Man with the Staff is an actual person in the... Yeah. No, a statue. Oh. I go mm. over to the statue. Yep. Yeah. Uh, his right arm is holding the staff kind of out in front. Uh, his left arm has been detached kind of like at the shoulder and is kind of dangling from a, like a web of uh, vines that are just holding it centimeters off the ground next to his leg. Is there any placard or anything? Uh, you look at the base of the statue and it looks like there once was a place for a placard, but that it's been pried up or removed in some way, whether by human hands or by the vines that have wormed their way into every crack in this place. You're not sure. But there's an empty space where, the pla where a placard might once have been. Can I do an investigation check around? See if I can find one. Sure. What are the rest of you doing? Is the truth. Oh, okay. Can I look around to try and see like how old it is to get an idea of like who it could have been worshipping? Uh, sure. Roll an investigation check. There we go. Oh my god. Finally. Boy, how this is... This is a decently old place. Uh, as you can tell from just the amount of wear and tear it's experienced. Um... Unfortunately, your knowledge on core religion is a little spotty. Um, but this does seem to have been here. Uh, at least the cave itself seems to have been here since Probably pre-emergence war, but post Year of the Dragon. Post Year, okay. So like a hundred years old, or um, probably about probably about five, probably anywhere between five hundred to eight hundred years old. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean post uh, Year of the Dragon. I meant uh, post Draconic Disappearance. Disappearance. Post Big Year Wars. Okay, that's yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a long yeah. time ago. Lore. So did you uh, idea the for those of you who are aware of the events of Campaign One, uh, this would have been pre-Campaign One, but not by much. Mm-hmm. Oh. It was post the here wars, but no, weren't, weren't we in year three hundred and something from post? From yeah, this post uh, campaign one was uh, year three hundred eighty four, three hundred eighty five of the second era. Yeah, uh, and this is a second era construction. Okay. Um, and then at the end of campaign one was the dragon surge and the war of emergence, which started era three. And this the is... The Emergence War called it. This is Shush. You know it's right. Shush the DM. Hey, Alan! What? <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry, yeah. me now. Uh, yeah, never mind, it's fine. War of Emergence, yes. Is that his name? Yeah, it's a little bit older than the War of Emergence. Okay, I can change that then. Or the Emergence War. Oh, don't make your mind up. <laughs> it's the same thing. I know, but it's not, because in, uh, it's the War of Emergence, and that's the only way it's going to be known as from now on. Ha. But I like the Emergence War better. That, sounds, that has a more ra better ring to it. Okay, fine. It's the Emergence War is right the first time. Let's get on with the session. Right. Stop. 
I think it's totally hot girls. I think it's supposed to be a hot girl cup holder. <laughs> I think it's gonna hot be girl cup holder. Hot girl cup holder. And I hate it. They are a canyon. <laughs> They're a canyon. 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 We named a canyon after them. <laughs> <laughs> no, we named a giant <laughs> pit in the ground after them. Well, we did. Oh, wait. No, that uh, was just call. That's a different. That, that is just call. Fuck him. Yeah. yeah, fuck you, call. Anyways, so you're in this shrine. You've kind of figured out it's probably from the second era. I kind of pick my teeth and just pretend that I know what I'm looking at, but really I'm just like, huh. So there's really only like a statue in here? Yeah. Well, there's a statue, I mean, there's the things. altar, and then there's like benches and like cubby holes in the wall and uh, a couple of uh, chimneys. Ooh. Can I see with, into the uh, fireplaces? Holes? It's designed to be a place to camp. And so there's all of the things that you would expect from, like, a designed campsite. In addition to the statue and the altar. Um... What was I going to say? That would help my brain work. Um. Nope, it's gone. Come back to me. I will say it's kind of sad seeing the shrine in such disrepair. Is there Makes you almost to... nostalgic. Is there anything we can do to help somewhat fix it up? Uh, I mean, clearing out some of the vines and moss and dirt. Yeah, I you can absolutely. Gilda. You can absolutely yeah. clean it. For the purposes of restoring this shrine, um, I would like to cut some vines away yeah. and move the moss and dirt. My dad's calling me really fast, so I'm going to answer. I didn't know you had a sending stone. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a yes. And I'm going to start cleaning up. Okay. The vines are tougher than you expected. Uh, even with your newfound claw and how sharp it is. This is going to take a while if you want to decently clean the whole room. Even with the others helping. Everyone do we mind spending some time restoring the shrine? Okay, I'm back. It will take time if we do it, but it's restoring a place of rest and relaxation for people. The only reason I would say to hold off on the shrine is because we don't necessarily know what it's worshipping. But, like, we can restore the area, but leave the shrine as is. If it is a shrine, there are Alan, can my brain work the way it should work with this because of my nat 20? Uh. Some knowledge of the greater pantheon. I'm just saying, if it's a spooky god, let's not fuck with it. Spooky. Yeah, uh, Gilda, with your nat 20 in investigation, there does not seem to be any indication of the spookiness of the god, or rather, the lack thereof. This... This seems to be a well-meaning place, and although you typically do your travel by sea, 
you've heard of and during one of your trek during a uh your trek to uh Dragonbirth Bay you had uh spent the night both coming and going in a shrine similar to this oh, okay these aren't necessarily built for uh the more evil side of the pantheon such as Dvugar Tota mm mm-hmm. These are more neutral or good-aligned deities who would celebrate the idea of rest and health and safe travels. So, uh, do you all spend the rest of the day cleaning the shrine? Or how long are you going to spend here? I should ask. I would spend as long as it takes to get it clean, but I don't know about everyone else. If you do spend the rest of the day, you are a little bit less than a day's walk from uh, Lithostein Harbor. The shrine seems to have been intentionally placed. Sure. Yeah, why not? Is everyone else okay with that? Just for the day. Yeah. I guess. So we know we know it's not one of three gods. Sorry. In my brain, I'm I, I can't. <laughs> uh the whole pantheon isn't written, which is like a decent eighty percent of the reason why you guys can't figure out what god it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, just look, look on look on the thing and just pick one. Nah. What is Varini? Nah. Livani. David Hasselhoff? Yeah, David Tyros. Hasselhoff. Let's go with that. Uh, I'm just sat here being like, which one is it? Which one is it? I know it's not one of those three. Which one is it? <laughs> It's not one that's written yet. God dang it. Suck it, Lore Keeper. <laughs> Welcome to my pain and torture, guys. This is what I you deal do. with. So, yeah. Um, By the way, I'm going to force you to write it for next week. Oh, I know. <laughs> By next week, you mean two weeks, right? Yes. Next week, because we only do one week between sessions and not two right now. Exactly. Um, but yeah, you spend the rest of the day and night cleaning out the shrine. Um, do any of you have a way to reattach the statue's arm to its body? I mean, kind of, but not really. Puzzle I figured grows. not. But I also figured I'd ask. I, I say kind of, but not really, because I really kind of do. Because I've been having one of my cantrips be cycling each day. Since I got my new hand. And ironically, the one I just was like, oh, this is not going to be useful, but I'll just grab it just in case. I was like, let's get mending in case anything breaks. Mending would work. I've literally just been cycling through cantrips each day <laughs> on one slot, and today was the day I chose mending. No, mending would mending would definitely work. Okay, I will use say mending. you, um, and that'll also help with some of the cracks in the walls from where vines had grown in and widened them. Um, yeah, uh, after your day's worth of difficult, strenuous work clearing away the vines and the moss and the dirt and restoring the shrine. It's exhausting, but it's fulfilling. And as you settle down to camp in the shrine for the night, you feel safe. With the statue's stone eyes watching over you. I 
think I know which god this is, but I'm really annoyed because it's probably not. Even though it makes so much sense. So, um, can you take your long rest in the shrine? Yes. Okay. Whoa. Wait, um, what? Uh, can I divine sense on the shrine? What do you mean? Like, whenever we clean it, like, divine sense to see, like, if that deity, like, is aware, question mark? Um, that's a little bit beyond the capabilities of divine sense. Uh, but... Yeah, no, you know I can sense okay. if it's been Roll a D one hundred. Holy uh, shit. D one hundred is right there. Wow. Wow. No, you are unable to tell whether or not a deity is watching. Oh, watching. Can I tell like can I can tell if it's been consecrated or desecrated? Um, after you finish cleaning, uh, the area feels consecrated. Spooky. That is my announcement. <laughs> okay. The spooky announcement has been made. Well. Indeed it has. D and D? So, you take your long rest in the shrine then? Guess so. Okay. You awaken to a feeling of strength that you haven't felt in a while. Um... you get the sense that whatever being watches over this place has given you a small blessing in exchange for your service. You've all gained the benefits of the Old World's Rest spell, which is in the Homebrew Spells chat. Um, your speed is increased by 10 feet until your next short or long rest. <sighs> And whenever one of you fails a saving throw, uh, another one of you can use your reaction to re-roll using your own bonus as opposed to the person who fails. Uh, to try to help out. Imagine we got an intelligence saving throw for, with this, guys. <laughs> But with the additional blessing of this god of travel, you find the remainder of your journey to Lithostein Harbor easy, calm, Whoa. and as you feel the breeze coming in from the ocean and step through the gates, at Lithstein Harbor. We're going to go ahead and end the session there. Woo! Yeah, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do not, for the love of Christ, uh, don't Can we drive. make this the least disliked video on YouTube? Let's see if we can hit zero dislikes, guys. And zero likes. And zero oh, likes. You and know. zero subscribers. Too late. You're welcome. Looking forward to our 15 subscriber special soon. <laughs> Not if I un unscribe. Not if I unsubscribe. Not if I cast scrying. You find a sad feeling. I sure do. See you next week, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Yeah. Peace out. Uh, Tyler out. Peace. Yeah.
Peace out. Yeah, fucking Tyler. Mm -hmm.